Hey friends, I'm going to paint a pig on a oh, 12 by 12 canvas and I thought I'd show you how I prep a canvas because I usually have it in process when I show you uh, how I paint. And this will be a um, real-time painting video like my previous cow one with the greenish background. Okay, as I mentioned, this is a 12 by 12 canvas. Um, I got this one at Michael's. I also buy canvases at Blick. Um, it's got plastic on it. Ooh, that was kind of loud. I just thought I'd show you from the very beginning how this works. Oh, so I'm just going to throw all the garbage on the ground. So it's an inch and a half thick. Um, all my canvases, well, I shouldn't say all, but... 95% of my canvases are um, inch and a half thick. So this one's actually pretty tight. I don't know if you can see it, but the corners are a little pushed in. Um, usually these smaller square ones are pretty good. But what I would do um, for bigger canvases, I have, you know, a spray bottle, has water in it. For little canvases, I just have a little finer. And this, I also use this for misting my palette. It's a finer mist. And you just spray the back with water. Get it nice and wet. And sometimes you can even kind of oh, wet the front. And then I'm, I'll use a hair dryer. Just a, this was my daughter's hair dryer. To dry it, I'm not gonna turn it on and have you listen to that really loud hair dryer noise. So I'll be back. I'm just gonna dry it quick. So I dried it with a hair dryer, and it really tightened up, even though I really didn't see any sags in it. So it's a good idea, probably just to spray them all, get them nice and tight. And then oh, I was gonna show you before we get started. I'm gonna paint the pig. Similar to this style, it's a brushier, more impressionistic style. There's a word, uh, which I think will be really fun. I'm calling this one bullseye. <laughs> I, I think you can get why. So next step, I gotta grab the canvas, would be, um, so these are pre-gessoed canvas. Some artists think you should put another coat or two or gesso on it. I think, I personally think they're in really good shape when you get them. Uh, quite often I'll put on some less expensive white acrylic paint. This is Liquid Tex Basics. Um, it's a student grade paint. Just to get, um, I don't know, a big coat of paint on the canvas and uh, smooth it out a little bit. I also use uh, golden paints. I don't know if you can see that, golden. But I don't use that many because I have a hard time getting the caps off. It's not funny. I like the uh, Liquitex heavy body with the bigger caps. They're easier for me to get off. All right, so I'm going to paint this all white. And then I'll probably come back uh, with the pig sketched on it. So I painted the canvas white, which you can't probably tell. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned but so I like to get some paint down because the gesso uh, sucks up paint and gives it something the paint to grab onto. And so this way it, it will suck up less paint um, as I start painting the pig. And then I've got the pig on here transferred, but I got it in a light color. So as I'm looking at my camera or at my phone, it may be darker when I actually see the, the video. You can kind of see the nose there. And then, so, oh, so I did it, I use, um, sometimes I use chalk pastels, they're water soluble. Um, I've showed them in my, uh, I think I've showed them in my watercolor videos on YouTube. I just have a small set. It's kind of nice to have a variety of colors. And then it'll just uh, basically melt away right into the acrylic paint. And sometimes I use watercolor pencils. Oh, these are Stadler, is that how you say that? Um, and I also, which I don't always show you guys, I write the word love on every canvas before I start painting. So I think we'll write it right here.
Let's put a little heart on there. I don't know if you can see that. We'll get it closer to the camera. There. I think it's just a good way to start a painting. Um, I think it uh, also is a good way to send out, I'm gonna say good vibes. I'm hesitating because that sounds so artsy fartsy. Good vibes into the world. I've painted, there isn't much background on this one. It's the same color I did in the uh, cow painting you may have seen on social media. Uh, we I just took photos of that one. Uh, it's bullseye, it has a big cow eye right, right on the painting. Um, I thought I'd show you my palette. Ultramarine blue, Mars black. Uh, this is ultramarine blue and neutral gray five, which is what the darker color is because ultramarine blue is pretty intense and kind of purpley. And then titanium white. Oh, eh, which way? This way, titanium white. And then the background I painted with this Filbert. Um, it's a uh, number six Filbert. Gosh, is that a half inch maybe? Can you see that? About a half inch. Uh, it's Artist Loft uh, Level 3 Professional. That's a really nice brush. Oh, and then I don't know if you can see, there's like little hairs hanging out. You can just trim those off, they get in the way. That's what I painted the background with. And then I was thinking I might do the eye. Sometimes I do the eye last, in the middle. Um, it's not very big here, so I think I wanna get it in there and then I can paint some hairs over it. So I'm gonna use the same blue. Uh, in my reference photo, it looks just like a solid black eye, but we're gonna put a little more color in it. That's a really small brush. I wonder if I want a bigger brush. Uh, this brush is what I pretty much um, sign my paintings with. It's a really small liner brush. Let's pick something a little bigger here. So I think, I'm not sure what color I want. I'm gonna grab some black and just kind of darken up. like. Hmm, that might work pretty well. So I've got a little bit too much water because I had missed my uh, palette because I was going to put it in a gallon baggie to save it. And then I decided I might do the eye. So now I've got too much water. That's right. We'll just put a couple coats on the eye. So right now I'm getting kind of a blue gray color. This is just a, I didn't show you this brush. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little knife brush. I can kind of see it. And for this painting, I'm sitting the big uh, 20 by 20 cow painting where it's licking its nose. It has kind of a greenish background. Um, I'm standing for that one, but this one's only a 12 by 12, I think. So I'm sitting. I picked up a little black there. But even though I, I, I googled Look like some pink, this is going to be a pink pig. Look like some of them had brown eyes and some of them had blue. So if some of you guys know pigs, pig breeds, what color their eyes are, put it in the comments because I'd love to know. Um, I like the pigs with the blue eyes, so that's what we're, that's what we're going to do here. Most um, acrylic paintings, I put on one coat or a base color, underpaint, sometimes they call it underpainting. Um, and then I put on another layer because it just looks better. Well, that's a decent start. I realized I didn't start the camera, but I started painting the ear. So I'm using the same brush that I used for the blue background. Um, I'm gonna try to use it for most of the painting because it makes it more unified. Oh, this is titanium white, if you can see it. 
uh, unbleached titanium. I love this portrait pink. Um, you could mix it. You can look on the back of the tubes to see what uh, colors they use to get that color. Uh, this is medium magenta, red oxide, and burnt umber. So I'm just painting some dark areas. So this is a little burnt umber, a little red oxide. Um, I don't always paint out of the tube, but sometimes I like it because you get a little bit more pop and intense color. Um, some artists think you should always mix. I kind of do a little bit of everything. Which I suppose isn't helpful for those who want, you know, tried and true rules. I think art sometimes is about breaking the rules, doing what you like, doing what you're comfortable with. You know, don't sweat it sometimes. You'll figure out, you'll figure out as you go along what you want to do. Okay, we want a little, this color comes down in here. So brush stroke direction matters. Um, like with animals, you want to paint in the direction of the fur. And with this pig, we're going to have shorter brush strokes because he's got short fur. I suppose that was a no brainer comment there. Of course it has short fur. <laughs> it's not like a shaggy dog. Say it actually goes more this way. Speaking of brush stroke direction, I think that needs to be a little darker. I don't know if I'm, I keep, uh, I start painting and I don't pay attention to whether you can see what I'm doing. That's too much brown. And I'm getting a little sticky, so I'm grabbing a little water. I'm thinking that's a little dark, but we can lighten it up later. So I've gotten a little further, so I thought I would film a little more. Um, I'm just painting the chin of the pig. And really all this is, is just the first layer. Getting down some color, getting down some value. I already said this, just getting some color down. I tend to get kind of fussy when I really shouldn't be. I should just like put paint down. Oh, I should show you. It's kind of a combination of red oxide, burnt umber, and I think I've got some portrait pink in there. Just kind of make a pinky brown. I've got sitting over on a on a chair here so I don't have to hold it. I suppose I can hold it so you can see it better. So are you guys doing anything during, um, I don't know if we're really quarantined now. A lot of states are loosening restrictions. Are you still pretty much staying home? Are you having family get-togethers? What's going on in your world? And a little white. So you now I have to pay attention. Like I think I'm gonna want this lighter and the nose pinker, which I can always fix if I don't get it right the first time. One of the nice things about having layers to your painting is you make adjustments as you go. I 
Let's put a little dark here, kind of the hint of the corner of the eye that doesn't really show in my reference photo. All right, I think I'm gonna paint a little more so I don't bore you guys to death. Hey, I'm trying to paint, but Freckles, who's president and CEO of AnnieTro.com, won't let me paint, so I thought I would show her to you guys. <laughs> hey, put in the comments what pets, what fuzzy loved ones you have in your family. So I've gotten a little more of the pig done, and I was thinking I might work on the nostrils a little bit, and then more of the nose, so I thought I would video that. Um, I'm looking at my reference photo a little bit. Oh, this is just a little, I don't know if you can see it. It's a little knife brush. It's more for detail. And I'm using, I'm not too concerned, but I'm just using a little, uh, little uh, medium gray and burnt umber in the nose. I might come back with some black. I might, I want this a lot lighter with white. I just kind of getting, as I mentioned a couple times now, just getting some color down. Grabbed a little unbleached titanium to lighten it. And grab a little more. Oh, and I got a little white on my knuckle. Oh, so you can see how I stick my finger on the canvas to sort of anchor it. More help. Right now I'm just trying to get the shape in and kind of get a little value in. It's a little better. Let's go over and do this one. So I'm just grabbing some straight up burnt umber. There's a little portrait pink. So I guess with painting, all you do is you put in some color, kind of decide where your darks and your lights are gonna be. So my darks in the eye, in the ear, in the nose, and then the light's gonna kind of come this way. It's a soft light. So you just kind of make adjustments. And the nice thing about painting animals, flowers, people, they're not perfect. So your painting certainly doesn't need to be perfect. Although I, if you do portraits, they're gonna want it a certain way that they have in their mind, which is why I do pet portraits, but I don't do people portraits, because it just gets to be, they want you to fix things. And I'm not real good at fixing. I'm much better at painting what I see. <laughs> She's your best friend. Oh, yeah, I suppose I should talk if you're videoing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody, here's my best friend, as Emily just said. It's a little tough to paint. Yeah. Plus, it's getting warm in here. I want to turn a fan on. Oh. She's burying her head. Yeah. Oh, hi, Pico. Right. I definitely want to see photos of your guys' fuzzy loved ones. <laughs> uh, hi, Pico. New meeting to... Hi. New meeting to photo bombing. Yeah. <laughs> Video bombing. She's a sweet girl. I've made more progress on this cute little pig. I don't have any title ideas in mind. I think it's a young pig. It looks like it in my reference photo. So what do you guys think of maybe Piglet? I don't know. Um, I'm still just laying down first layer of color. Oh, you should see my palette. I dropped it so the pink ran. So 
So I always think I should chatter and paint. I don't know. When I paint, I normally don't talk. So I don't know what to say. Um, just kind of mixing in this mess right here. It's a little red oxide get a little darker. There we go. I'm using the edge of my brush. I'm gonna clean it off a little bit. So, if you wanna be more efficient, I would use this color all the places I think I needed it. But I tend to work more in sections. Um, so then I end up cleaning my brush a lot, which takes more, makes it take a little longer to paint. It's not necessarily a bad thing. My paint's kind of wet, so not even though I'm you know, trying to get the direction of the fur, it's not really showing there. I don't know if you can see that. It shows a little better. That's another reason to have layers when you paint with acrylic is you can go back with some drier brush strokes to define them a little bit better. That's like way too dark right there. Of course, I'm gonna, this is a really pink pig right now. It looks even pinker when I look at my uh, phone that's uh, videoing. I'm gonna go back and the next layer is gonna have more white and lights and have things pop out more. I wanted to get some color down. So I don't know if you noticed, but I switched directions because I'm doing the forehead now. Whoops, that's more darker. That's a lot more dark than I want. <laughs> I'll just kind of leave it in there and then we'll lighten it up. Cool. Oh, I think I need some color. So this is kind of interesting thing. You want to go in the direction of the creases, but then you also kind of want to go in the direction the short fur is going. Hey guys, I've made more progress. I added quite a bit of white um, over the pink. And now you can see I put a brush stroke here and a brush stroke here because I'm wanting to make it sort of bigger brush stroke here. I got a little more detailed and I don't know if I can, um, how it's gonna work, but I'm gonna try and go back and add some bigger brush strokes. I wanted a little bit more um, impressionistic. It start, it's starting to look a little real to me, if that makes sense. Um, it's also starting to look kind of cute. <laughs> So it's always good when you like your own art. We'll see what this does. And then I'll come back with some white again and try to be a little bigger in my brush strokes. A little more expressive. Oh yeah, see I kind of like that. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, and I did more on the eye, which I'm, I'm liking better. And then I tied, I don't know if you can see it, because it's gonna it might look black. But so I took the blue in the eye and I put it in the nose, and actually these black areas are blue just to kinda normally you try to tie in all the colors in the painting, but with a portrait you can kind of get away from it. But I wanted to bring a little more blue into the pig. So sometimes you try something and you're like you like it, but it's not quite the look you're going for. So then you just go back and make adjustments. And then the layers actually make it more interesting anyway. You know, you don't have to get it just right the first time. So I'm just looking for places to kinda put in some of this. Uh, oh, here, you should see my palette. So I, I keep it in a Ziploc baggie, a gallon baggie. This is an eight inch styrofoam plate. And then I'll put like a little butter container on top to keep the plastic up off the paint or just something. 
set on top of the plate, but I dropped it so my pink ran. But at least it was inside the baggie when I dropped it. And then my paints are starting to get kind of sticky, so I think I might start a new palette here in a little bit. But thank goodness when I dropped it, it was in the baggie. <laughs> but I do have a vinyl tablecloth on top of the carpet in my studio here, so if I do drop a paintbrush or something, we're pretty safe, but I don't have every square inch covered. I think I'm gonna like that better. If not, we'll just go back to the way I had it. A little bigger brush strokes is what I'm aiming for. Okay, I'm gonna shut off the video. My cat just hopped down. She might bump the, the camera. I wanted to pop in for a second here. So my cat is helping me paint and she looks really thrilled for me to be picking her up. <laughs> Say hi, Freckles. Oh yeah, she's not happy. Hi guys. Uh, this painting all of a sudden came together pretty darn quick. Um, I think I got the eye. I put in some more darks, some more lights. Um, I'm liking, I think you can see it better. I've got bigger strokes here. I'm gonna work on the nose maybe to smooth it out a little bit. And then if I don't like it, I'll probably put all that texture back in there. And then I might put a little um, mixing white over here to kind of smooth that out because I want the focus to sort of be the nose, the eye, and the ear. So I never did uh, get a new palette because I keep thinking I'm almost done. So I've got a, here, a white, maybe I'll wipe this off see it. So I've got just a little, oh my hand's so pink, a little flat brush. I mean you can see better against the pig. Um, I don't know if I can read it. It's a number four and it's even getting super short because I worn it down. A lot of scrubbing with it. to let me know my voice kind of squeaked there uh, please let me know if you like this this is my second in a series of painting I did a brushy cow um, we just put I just put photos of that on Facebook on social I guess I should say social media because I'm on Instagram Twitter Pinterest <laughs> gosh YouTube the videos go on YouTube most of them are at Annie Art Annie Tro Artist. It's kind of softening some of that gray over there. I want it still kind of brush strokey, but um, the nose doesn't have fur on it, so it's going to be smoother. Then I kind of even look um, at my phone, which is videoing this, because it, it's almost like stepping away from it to see how the how the values look. I really like it when I'm looking in the video camera here. I'm not sure I like all this gray here. My reference photo kind of has it. Maybe just kind of break it up a little. Just grabbing some white. Maybe. So I'm kind of smearing in the shape of the of the nose. All right, I think I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna put mi some mixing white over here and I'm gonna let it sit. Uh, it's getting kind of late at night. 
see how I what I think about it in the morning and maybe sign it. I think it's done. If you have any uh, painting title idea ideas, <laughs> let me know in the comments. That would be awesome. Thank you for following me on social media. Thank you for watching this. Uh, be sure to follow me on Facebook. I do giveaways over there. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.